thanks for for having breakfast with us. Oh, this, this is great. So I'm we're we're where it all kind of started for you. At yeah. Johnson County Community College. What what did you what do you take away the most from your experience here? Um, you know, I think that. It's interesting because so many people actually do get started at like community college or, um, uh, you know, not necessarily jumping straight into a, a four-year degree or university. And um, I think starting off with an associate's degree helped me with. I mean, certainly it helped with cost. <laughs> yeah. <I laughs> and bet. then. Um, loans, no yeah. <laughs> and then actually, so uh, one of the things that I really liked about specifically about Johnson County Community College was that the like wide range of courses that I was able to take I took a lot of very interesting classes while I was on my way to my uh, liberal arts associates so um, yeah just having a lot of classes and opportunities to learn about a lot of different things so I did a little research about you oh. I mean we already know <laughs> you do MMA like, mm -hmm. which what made you want to get into MMA fighting um, so, well, first I was obsessed with Bruce Lee when I was growing up. Um, I was always running around and, you know, just trying to be Bruce Lee. And um, as I got older, my, my mom, you know, I was raised by a single mom, and um, there were three of us, uh, or there are three of us. I have two little brothers. Mm -hmm. um, she just couldn't afford to pay for martial arts classes. And so when I was an adult, I was like, hey, I can pay for my own martial arts classes now. So I got, I started getting into martial arts when I was about 19 and six or seven years later I was training and my coach just suggested that I uh, compete because I was working out all the time and just kind of obsessively training and trying to get better at martial arts. And um, the idea of training for a fight and you know, everything you do for two months, um, leads up to this one like 15 minutes you have 15 minutes to demonstrate all of the things that you've been working so hard on um and it was something about that like and then the first time i did it i really just enjoyed my enjoyed the hard work that you have to put in so and i mean you're kind of like preparing for a fight now not a physical fight right but running for for congress i mean that, that's a, a big leap from from what you've been doing what made you say you know I want to be, you know, the, the congressperson from Kansas. So it's I'm I'm actually glad that you uh, made that made that connection because I do think that um, my martial arts training has um, certainly prepared me uh, for this in a way that I'm not sure a lot of people would make that connection. So um, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it came down to wanting to see. Um, just wanting to see representation that is actually more reflective of the experiences that we have as a community, as a state, as a country. And um, like I said earlier, a lot of people get started as a first generation college student or um, you know, having to work the entire time they're in school or just struggling to figure out how am I gonna pay for uh, sometimes basic necessities, sometimes it's you know, trying to figure out how you're going to pay for health care and, um, and I just I want to see more of those experiences being reflected in the folks who are creating legislation that affects all of us. Gotcha. Let's dig in for a second. I heard, uh, what's, your, what's your favorite breakfast meal type of food? Um, okay. I was going to take a bite on TV. Um, two things are probably my very favorite things. Um, breakfast sandwiches with ham, um, ham, egg, and cheese. Mm -hmm. And then I also really like pancakes, uh, but I try not to, I try not to eat them all the time. Do you but, make them yourself or do you buy them? Oh, I'm not sure anybody wants me making pancakes. <laughs> you not good cook? <laughs> no. There's like three things I make. Um, I think I, three things that I make well. Um, I like to say I make world famous mashed potatoes. Okay. Um, and then uh, spaghetti. Now, do you make spaghetti with the big meatballs? Like, do you put this, the sauce on top or do you mix it all together? Like, my mom, it's all mixed all together. I, I mix it all together. I mix it all together. Yeah. 
So it makes it so the noodles are kind of squishy for leftovers, but there you go. That's okay. So in my research too, I heard you're, you love sci-fi and you love superheroes. <laughs> who, who, who's your favorite superhero and why? I was worried you were going to ask me this question, partly because it's so hard to choose. Um, so I like all things Arrowverse, uh, which means you know Arrow, the Flash, um, Supergirl. Uh, Legends of Tomorrow, which has a whole bunch of mm -hmm. people in it. Um, but uh, I really, really liked it when Iris was a speedster. And so that's from The Flash. And, um, and then Supergirl's probably the show that I, that I get most excited to sit down and watch. So it's and Black Lightning, which okay. is a newer show. So I only have I one I season. Seen, I so I only have one season, but, um, but that show's really... I like the Flash. I used to run track. A hundred pounds ago, I ran track in high school. Uh, and so what were Flash your... was one of my 100, 200, and 4 by one relay. Oh. So yeah, it was cool. Um, so to transition a little, a little to politics, um, what do you think for the 3rd Congressional District is the most important thing right now um, that you say, you know, this is where I want to, you know, focus on if, if elected? As so... I always joke that I used to be a server, so I know right when to ask people a question. It's as soon as they take a bite. Um, Is that a shot at me? No. <laughs> I'm saying it would normally oh. be me. So um, it's got to be health care. The number of people who, like, are every single time I go to an event, every single time we have a meet and greet, every single time I'm making phone calls and talking to people, um, with, without fail, it, it seems like every single, um, every single day I'm hearing about healthcare. And that's, a, it ranges, you know, sometimes people are worried about whether or not they're gonna, you know, like, oh, I, I, I switched um, jobs and now I'm worried about whether or not the pre-existing condition that I have is gonna increase my premiums. Um, whether or not, um, can I, like the number of people who've talked to me about their deductibles, you know, I always get a $6,000 deductible and I, and I pay $500 a month already. And um, so that kind of stuff. Uh, and then really people who aren't able to access healthcare or, or insurance at all, you know, and the costs are just like astronomical for so many people. Um, you know, when, when I was younger, I actually ended up getting injured um, while I was at the gym. Um, I was working out and I got injured and I ended up going to the emergency room and I didn't have health care uh, insurance at that time. And I had to get a CAT scan and it cost $4,000. Wow. And um, two things from that. One, as soon as they took me into the room, I thought I was going to get an x-ray and then it was a CAT scan. And I, and I was like, wait, why am I getting a CAT scan? Because the first thing I thought was, how much more expensive is this right. going to be? And then um, it takes a long time to pay that kind of stuff off when you're working as a server, as, I mean, most jobs. I think I was working down at the Marriott downtown in the sales office at that time or something, um, you know, and it had just started. So it takes a little bit of time for your health insurance to kick in. It's like a whole bunch of different um, factors that so many people struggle with. And... Um, I mean, I recognize that even my story is is so much less severe than what other people are facing. That is the thing that I'm, I just know that, you know, winning this election will mean that I'll get the opportunity to try to help make sure that more people are covered, that more people have access to affordable health care and quality health care. Let's talk about, you know, the elephant in the room um, as we stay on politics. I'll make sure you finish stealing <laughs> your bagel. Uh, uh, so far, it, it has appeared that this race has turned into a, a battle over immigration and ICE, which I don't know if uh, you know a lot of voters may not think that's the most important thing to the third congressional district uh, when it comes to jobs and healthcare and education. Uh, but while we have you here, um, I want Sharice Davis to say, you know, what she believes. Do you think ICE should be defunded? or ICE should be abolished? Um, so I'm, I don't support abolishing ICE. Um, 
this to me feels like uh, an example of how every single issue that is talked about, every single issue that our country faces um, is has turned into this like partisan gamesmanship and partisan politics. And um, frankly, that is part of what has gotten us to the point where we aren't seeing anything happening. You know, our Congress has not um, not been acting in favor of the people. And, you know, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican or an independent, if you're representing a group of people, your job is to make sure that their voices are heard and their needs are being um, addressed. And that's not happening. And this feels like an, another example of how that gamesmanship plays out. So lastly, uh, before I let you go, you can really eat your okay. breakfast. Okay, <laughs> one more bite um, while you're asking this one. So, you know, you're, you're the child of, you know, of, a, of a mother who was in the military. My dad um, was Army. I was oh. born in Fort Jackson in South Carolina. Uh, you're a very diverse candidate uh, with your background in many realms. Talk, what would you tell the voter who sees this in a, not a 30-second soundbite, what would you tell the voter of why, you know, they should elect you and not, you know, a person who's been in Congress for a while who, um, you know, Kevin Yoder, your opponent, is chair of, a, of an important subcommittee now. And uh, why do you think people should not stick with what's been going on? Well, I say two things. One, Washington has been broken for a while, and we definitely need to... Um, elect new new candidates. Um, it comes back to us really putting forth um, who we are as a community. And when I think about the ways that I'm able to um, bring our voice to DC, a lot of it has to do with having an experience that is reflective of so many of the people in our community. Uh, whether it's first-generation college student, raised by a single mom, child of, an, of a veteran, um, you know, working the entire time I was in school. N none of these experiences are that uncommon, but they certainly are uncommon um, or not common enough with the people who are creating legislation that affects all of us. Um, and I think that that will make a difference in how our country is like the direction our country is headed, the, the legislation um, being more inclusive of this broad range of experiences that, that is reflected in our society and our, in our community. Sharice Davis, thank you so much for, for talking with us, having a, a couple of bites, yeah. you know, getting the bites in, in between your questions and good luck to you in the midterm election. Thank you so much, appreciate it.